I'm Batman. Well, I hardly think so. The real Cape Crusader calls his crime-fighting cohorts when he's running late. I have to walk. I couldn't get Raj on the back of my scooter. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Aquaman sucks. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for being with us here on Tactics the Geek End. Now, it is a really important day because yesterday, you may recall, that Sony finally announced the PlayStation 5. That's right, the ninth generation of console gaming is quickly coming upon us. And since our group is populated primarily with Nintendo guys, including myself... Uh, I and Scott are the only ones that watched it, so he is here tonight with us to discuss that. Thanks for being on the program with us, Scott. Yeah, glad to be here. All right, so there is a lot to talk about with this one, but I have to say, I thought it was a really smart idea for Sony to do kind of the opposite of what both they and Xbox have been doing in the past couple generations when they announced their console, which is they actually put the focus on the games. And I thought that was a pretty smart decision because if you watch the conferences for the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, they barely talked about the games at all, especially with Microsoft. They were talking about how you can watch TV with it and it plays Blu-rays and that kind of thing, which, you know, was all fine and well and good, but it's a video game console. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that Sony came out swinging with a whole bunch of AAA titles that they're going to be bringing to the PlayStation 5 either at launch or very soon to launch, I thought that that was a really smart decision. Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, because the, they got it all out of the way. Like, the sorry, they got it all, all the stuff out of the way because you knew the specs going into this. Mm. The only thing you don't know is the price and what it looked like. Um, so, yeah, it was a really smart idea to just hit on the games of, like, what's going to be out for this generation. Um, so, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. So one thing I wanted to ask about uh, with this particular venue, I know that they probably had to do some things that weren't traditionally what they would normally do just because through no fault of their own, the coronavirus is going on. And so they can't have a a big stage show. They had to do everything digitally. They basically made it uh, almost a movie. They, They did have representatives from different game companies and their own company come out occasionally and speak directly to the camera. But it was primarily just a whole bunch of trailers. There really wasn't that sort of stage kind of energy. And so how do you think they handled that overall? Uh, I thought it was really good. Uh, Honestly, okay, personally, I felt like they could have broken it up um, because it it was just like trailer after trailer after trailer. You know, I I, I like to watch uh, a trailer. Um, I don't really like to watch those 30-minute compilations of movie trailers that came out this week. Um, and I, I mean, that was like, that was what this was, but in an hour and a half long format, you know? So I think they could have broken it up, like maybe in the middle, talk about the console, but yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat. I, I just hitting us with trailer after trailer doesn't give you a break in the action. Doesn't give you a second to recharge. And, and personally, from my standpoint, I don't know how you or, or other people, viewers at home, gamers that watch this kind of stuff. Uh, I tend to just zone out if it's a game that doesn't have my interest. And so really, if they do have a game that it's just a a trailer uh, and they don't give like a a break in the presentation, sometimes I'll kind of zone out and miss a part of a trailer that I actually did want to uh, did want to see. So that's not really Sony's fault. That's just uh, an issue with me having ADD. But uh, I don't know, maybe some other other players, other gamers that were watching this felt the same way. I don't know. Were, were you kind of getting that vibe or? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I'm even more, I'm, I'm a pretty niche gamer of like, I guess I'll watch trailers, but right. I don't get super excited by a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a lot of miss for me personally. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not excited and didn't enjoy the presentation. So what do you think about the hardware? Cause I know that they didn't emphasize that in a, uh, as much as they probably would have, you know, or, or like they did in the PlayStation four announcement, um, yeah. which I didn't have a problem with. I thought they gave the hardware exactly the amount of uh, attention that it needed. But uh, since that was a part of it, what'd you think of the hardware? We haven't really talked about that yet. Yeah, I thought, 
I, okay, real quick. I think it's interesting that to this point, the biggest hype man for the PS5 hardware has been uh, Epic Games or whatever, where they just like talked about how awesome the solid state drive is. Um, but as far as like the actual like, what does the console look like? I mean, it looks okay. It kind of looks like a, a cable modem. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it looks cool. I think the one the the one with the CD drive looks a little more odd. Um, but yeah, it looks fine. <laughs> Not super exciting. Yeah, I I agree that the one with the 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 disc drive looks a little bit odd too. But that's still going to be the one that I get because I don't like doing mm-hmm. digital only. Um, so a little bit more goofy. It's not quite as clean because they did have to have the addition, a place to put the disc in. And so um, do you think maybe the reason they didn't fine tune that one as much as they should have is because they're wanting to really push the digital edition? Yeah, I think that's totally accurate. So, so it's not, it's just kind of that they neglected it. It wasn't necessarily that they didn't, um, didn't consider it, but it was more like they wanted to put a lot more of their time and effort into the digital version. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's it'll, it'll be right at 2021 or, you know, pushing 2021 when it comes out. So, like, yeah, I mean, no offense to you, but people like you are, are definitely in the minority these days. Oh, I'm a dinosaur. I know it. I, <laughs> I mean, you know, from my time at the at the frat house, I'm an old man. And so yeah. that's just that's just the way I am. I like having hard physical copies of games. But I got to tell you, the thing that ticks me off, though, about Sony in general, and I know we're veering off course just a little bit in this one. Uh, the thing that really bothers me about Sony is that they have these gigantic games. Like uh, the last game that I did download on the PlayStation for um, is like 48 gigs. And the system only comes with 500. Like that's a pretty substantial chunk of your hard drive space. And so yeah. if they're going to go the digital route, which it seems like they really kind of want to do, they're going to have to give us a substantial amount of memory or a, an easy, cheap way to upgrade that memory. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be upgrade because the, but that's going to be tough. Cause like I'm reading this and it says it's 850 gigs of SSD, but the new part about this is that you can like possibly select it to only download multiplayer, um, which I guess would be a good perk. Um, but then, but then again, what they keep emphasizing is the solid state drive and how that's going to open up world design. So, like having an external drive or, or something is going to be tricky. So, if they have an upgrade version that you can do yourself, I think it's going to be crazy expensive. Well, that's another thing too. That super slick design that we were talking about, which I think is is accurate. Um, I, I don't think it was like groundbreaking or anything, but the digital version definitely looks better. That kind of gets ruined when you've got a two terabyte hard drive sticking out of it. So it, it's it's a bit of a trade off in my opinion, and that's that's actually what I had to do with my PlayStation Five is I ran out of memory so quickly that I had to just buy a two terabyte hard drive and, and stick it on there, and now it's a pain because you know I got to deal with that. But uh, no, I I agree they're they're gonna have to figure out a way to make the the memory work uh, and yep. work easily and and not greatly inhibit the gaming experience or your ability to download new games. I I think the ability to only download multiplayer doesn't really appeal to me personally, but I think it's going to help an awful lot of uh, gamers out there. And and they're not going for me anyway, because I'm the guy that wants physical copies in the first place. So maybe they, they know their market there a little bit. Um, So I think that we should follow Sony's example and kind of leave the hardware discussion for right now and let's focus on the game. So let us know, Scott, what games stuck out to you? Which ones do you like? Uh, Which ones do you think? Eh, whatever. All right. All right. Top five for me were Spider-Man, which I feel like you have indicated you disagree on. (laughs) Uh, Yes. We'll get to that. Grand Turismo. I just, I just get excited about it. NBA because I'm a sucker for sports games. Solar Ash. Yep. And then, uh, sack boy um i think those personally were the ones that stuck out like a uh, little big world is just such a pretty game um and, and i just like puzzle games like that sure uh, and then solar ash just seemed like it had a really cool like just the colors that they used and, and the design style that they used um I, i'm really anxious to see how that plays um and then i just thought 
I mean, I just thought Spider-Man looked really good. Um, they, they led with that for a reason, I feel like. Well, I mean, when you consider the impact that the previous Spider-Man game had, it was game of the year. When people think of the PlayStation 4, I guarantee you if uh, 10 years from now the Geek End is still running, which I kind of doubt, to be perfectly frank, and uh, <laughs> when you do a look back at the top 10 PlayStation 4 games, I can't imagine Spider-Man being anywhere lower than the top five. Right. And so I think it's no surprise that they're at least part of it is going to be recency bias, like because it's a really big AAA title recently that did really well. That's part of the reason they wanted to lead with Spider-Man. Uh, but it's, it's also just the fact that that was such a great game that they want something to carry over. They want something to, to carry over that hype. And for people that maybe even just recently got a PlayStation four to let them know, okay, maybe you've only had your PS four for a year or two because you wanted to play Spider-Man and, you know, maybe Final Fantasy VII Remake or another recent title. But uh, you definitely need to get a PS5 because this is something that's going to be coming out for our new console. So I think that was at least a part of the reason they decided to lead with that. Mm -hmm. um, now, personally, as a giant Spider-Man fan, I'm not going to play it. Like, I, I don't care. I don't like Miles Morales. I never have. I've never thought he was a good character in his own right. And I love the Spider-Man game, but I can't see myself buying it. And considering that they showed it, it seems that it's only going to be centered around Miles, which I assume means you don't get to play as Peter Parker. Now, maybe that's not the case, because, uh, what was it, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 originally only had Miles in it, and then it turns out, oh, Peter Parker's a playable character too, and you can play as him. It just That just happened to be what wound up in the trailer. Maybe right. something like that happens, and it turns out a big portion, if not the majority of the game is about Peter Parker, but considering the title is Miles Morales, I kind of doubt that. So, so I probably won't be buying it. Rated, even if it's a highly rated game, you wouldn't pick it up? Probably not. Maybe I'll wait two years and when it's 20 bucks or 15 bucks, I'll pick it up, but I'm definitely yeah. not going to spend 60 on it. Okay. Um, the other games, though, that stood out to me, some of the same ones that you talked about, Solar Ash... I mean, that art style is just, that drew me in immediately. So totally. I don't know if it's going to be a good game or not, and I don't know that I would necessarily like pick it up day one, but I'm definitely going to make a point to play that game at some point. So uh, that art style is just so interesting. Yeah. Um, and I, I really want to see it. If nothing else, it would just be fun to, I don't know how the gameplay is going to be obviously yet, but it would be really cool just to, to wade through it. Um, I have to say... Demon Souls looks interesting. Uh, Pragmata. I don't know if you're going to get this reference because I know you're not really a Final Fantasy guy, mm -hmm. but it really looks like Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, which was a like maybe late 90s, early 2000s straight to, to home video movie. And okay. I, I'm just telling you, that's that's what it was. It, it looks very similar to that in art style, like the way that they're wading through the uh, what seems to be like an abandoned New York City, and they have the spirits that they're looking for with the visor. That just it seems almost they ripped it directly out of Final Fantasy Spirits Within. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that caught that. And then mm -hmm. finally, the game that I think is probably the most interesting to me, the one that I'm most excited to play, is Kina. Bridge of Spirits. Yeah. Uh, fantastic art style. It really drew me in with the main character. Uh, the the way that she had like the staff and it looked like she was going to be sort of a magic user and then all of a sudden turns into a bow. It looks like they're going to be able to do a lot with that. It, it's very Zelda-esque in that sense, like a character that's constantly switching weapons, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know if that's actually how the game is going to be because, you know, we, we only saw like a two-minute trailer of it. But uh, if it's anything like the footage that we saw, I think that's going to be a really interesting game. Yeah, I, it looked so pretty. I mean, it, it just looked really interesting. So, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, like I said, I've got to really give major props to Sony for focusing on games because it's really felt like the past couple of generations that video game consoles have gotten steadily closer to being just uh, PCs, yeah. which in some ways is a good thing, but in some ways it almost feels like they're not even really focused on the games at a lot of these events. 
and the games are almost separate events. The fact that they kept a, kept a laser focus on games almost the entire presentation tells me that Sony has been listening to their fans and they're finally sort of getting back to their roots, which I think is really refreshing. Yeah. Like something I thought was interesting or, you know, when, when they were announcing the PS4 consoles or whatever, I remember at E3 when they did the PS4, they were like, this is actual PS4 footage. And then it came out later that they were actually running it on like this, like $15,000 computer or something. Um, so I, I thought that's interesting of like, you know, now we're at kind of at that point where it looks like the PS5 can actually outperform computers based off of the world and like the SSD interaction. Um, so, you know, you know, I think, I think that'll be a really interesting part to, to get away from that, um, of like, why are you not just playing this on a computer, um, and, and focusing on the games for the PlayStation? I actually have a, uh, a solid state drive computer and the load time is just so much faster. And yeah. so considering, especially since the PlayStation four game I've been playing the most recently is the final fantasy seven remake. And there will be times where you've got anywhere from a, like a full minute load time going into mm-hmm. an area. And the fact that they're going to be moving to solid state drive, I know it's going to be pricier and it may even price it out of range for some people, but that is going to be such a easy transition to where we're looking at significantly shorter load times. That's something that I'm really looking forward to from a hard, hard uh, hardware standpoint. I think, but I actually, I watched a video on this recently of like, uh, I'm a big fan of this YouTube channel called Linus Tech Tips. And apparently he like got into a online fight with the Epic Sky after they announced it. But so anyway, he like did a deep, a deep dive on the solid state drive for the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And apparently the way that they have designed it is just like it exceeds anything that a a computer currently a computer controller on a solid state drive can currently read and write. So that's what's opening up the PlayStation to really like bring the graphics on this new generation. And so like, that's what I'm, I'm just really excited about. Cause we're going to see these, these giant worlds load instantly that we've never had this ability to do before. Well, that is really fascinating. And I didn't know that little bit of inside baseball that you're bringing us there. And especially considering that gaming has moved so much into that sort of open world format I think that that's really going to make a big difference because you think about some of the the biggest game franchises here of the past decade, really, you think about like your Assassin's Creed's and uh, of course, even one that they led the presentation today with your Grand Theft Autos having these giant open worlds. I think that's going to make a really big difference, especially, you know, considering the the point that you just brought up. So uh, any final thoughts, anything that you might uh, not have seen that you wanted to see something like that? Something I want to point out, and then I do have a question for you. Sure. I forgot to mention Stray. Stray, I thought, looked really interesting. I mean, they didn't give anything away about the plot. It just looked like an interesting scene. And then they show the cat. So I'm kind of anxious <laughs> to see where that goes. Um, Sackboy. When they started the Sackboy trailer, I think that's what it was. No, I'm sorry. It was Ratchet and Clank. Maybe, whatever. It looked like a mascot. And I was like, oh, shoot. Are they giving us NCAA? They're not going to make that announcement. <laughs> Um, just because that's my favorite game of all time is NCAA football, and then it was it wasn't. So, I, like I knew it wasn't, but it still got my hopes up. I tell you uh, what, so if they had done that though, that would have blown everybody's mind. Oh, I know. I was gosh, I I almost got excited because like when they were putting on the mascot, I was like, that looks like Clemson's tiger. <laughs> um, so it looked like I'll be on crack. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, yeah. All right, the one I wanted to ask about was I did not understand what they were trying to do with that Grand Theft Auto one. Because, I, I mean, that came out, like, almost 10 years ago at this point. And, and, like, they were... So I just... Can you explain what they were advertising for that one? I can't. Uh, I wish no. I could. <laughs> but I was just as lost as you are. And maybe part of that is just because I'm not a Grand Theft Auto fan and I haven't yeah. really played any of the games. So maybe fans figured it out, but... Uh, whatever they were putting out there was too confusing for me or you, apparently. Okay. Uh, and then, like, in the corner for the trailer, they were showing PS4, so, like, I couldn't figure out what they are trying to say. 
Uh, yeah, didn't they directly after that say something about everybody that has Grand Theft Auto Five on PlayStation Four gets free in-game currency or something to that effect? Yeah, I think it's like if you have PlayStation Plus or something. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, dude, I'm just as lost as you were on that. Okay. So it's That's not just you. Sure. All right, I was surprised you weren't excited about Ratchet and Clank. That's one other one I want to bring up. Yeah. Actually, I, I am excited about that one in the sense that I may actually play it for the first time. I know that's probably surprising to you, but I've never played Ratchet & Clank. So oh, wow. I'm, th- I'm thinking this might actually be my entry into the series. I'm, I'm actually, I can't believe I forgot to write that one down, but yeah. uh, I will definitely give that one a look. Um, it, it may be another one that I sort of hold off on for a little while and pick up after there's been at least some price drop. I'm probably not going to wait like three years and wait for it to be like 20 bucks, but you know, I'll probably hold off on that one a little bit, but I've never played ratchet and clank. So I, this may be my gateway into that series. I don't know. One thing that I wanted to mention, and if you want to react to this, you can, that you're you're not a final fantasy guy, right? No, no, I didn't think so. I was kind of disappointed and I was very much expecting final fantasy, uh, seven remake part two to be on the docket. Like, especially since Square Enix is a game company that is so known for being like focused on graphics and really pushing the limit of whatever console that they're on. And they definitely did that with part one. I'm actually very surprised that they didn't announce that part two was coming to the PlayStation five. Maybe that's coming up soon. Maybe it's because the part one just now came out and they don't have enough footage to put a good trailer together. I really don't know. But I was very, very much expecting at least an announcement on that of some kind. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think this really would doing that would have said it just far and away of like what what we would have expected. So I, I think it would have moved it to a uh, standing up sink, uh, a standing up triple to a, a home run. I think that that's all we had. Um, really looking forward to what Sony does in the future. Thanks for being with us, Scott. All right, so really looking forward to what Sony does in the future with all this. I can't wait to see what's coming up next. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be an early adopter. Granted, a lot of the titles that we saw looked interesting. Not really sure if it was enough to justify me buying the brand new console. Probably going to wait a little bit on that one. I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, Either way, what did you think of the conference? What did you think of the announcement? How they put it together? The games that they presented? Fire off in the comments below. Thanks for being with us this evening. That's going to be our show for tonight. In the meantime, stay the course, friends. Tactics is a production of News Radio 1440 and Cumulus Media Montgomery. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Cumulus Media or our business partners. Graphics by Jessica Dawson. Video production by Jackson Dean. Broadcast studio provided by Faulkner University. Location studio provided by the Dalreda Church of Christ. Copyright 2020.